Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chanin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. And on this YouTube channel, I teach about data science concepts and tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So today we're going to start our first R data science project. You can get started by building your very own portfolio, which you can also share onto your GitHub. So this will be your portfolio for your data science project and your data science journey. So if you are embarking upon becoming a data scientist, this will be a very important part of your journey. So it's kind of like you're documenting your journey by doing the project that you will be learning from this channel. And as you are doing so, you can save your progress into your GitHub, which is kind of like your portfolio. And over time, if you modify codes, create new functions, apply your data science project to a new set of data, make some tweak to the parameters, you will have a growing portfolio on your GitHub. So if you're in this journey, then this is a very important part. Let's get started. Fire up the Google Chrome or your internet browser, uh, and also direct yourself to the rstudio.cloud, or if you're comfortable in using rstudio on your local computer, please do so. The thing that I like about the rstudio.cloud is because I'm able to work anywhere on any platform. So let's say that I'm using a Windows or Linux or a Macintosh, even an iPhone or even a tablet. So you can use the rstudio.cloud on any of these devices and it will show roughly a working version even on an iPhone. Okay. So the good thing is that you can access your code and your data on many devices. Okay. So let's load in this Iris project. And so let's get started by allowing you to do some data understanding. So if you haven't gone through the six steps of doing a data science project, please Please go to one of the videos in the data science 101 one of the first video so links will be down below okay so in this video I'm going to cover about how you can perform the very first step of a data science project which is to gain an understanding of your data set so in this example we're going to use an established data set called the iris data set which has already been used in one of our Wika tutorial where you were shown how to analyze that data set in one of the videos that I have previously made so also links down below it will be also be nice to compare contrast the model that's generated by using R and also by using Wika. So you want to load in the data set. So you have here many ways of doing that. So let's go with method number one, the Iris data set, which is already available in the base package of R called the data sets package. So you want to load that in. So you will type in the command library data sets. Okay. And then you will type in data parenthesis Iris. Okay, and notice that there is an object created called iris here. And if you type view iris, you will see it as a data frame shown here. So we have already loaded the data set using the first method, but I will show you how to load it using the second method. So let me clean that again. I'll click on the broom icon, which will allow you to clear objects from your environment. Okay, so I want to load in the library called rcurl. So if you haven't yet got that library installed, you can type in install.packages, parenthesis, quotation mark, rcurl. Okay, and then closing quotation, closing parenthesis, enter. And then after you have successfully installed the package, then you want to load it in using the library rcurl command. If you're uncertain whether you have this package, you can go to the packages tab and then find R curl. Do I have it? Yes, I do have it here. So R curl is already installed on my computer. Okay, so I'll load in the library R curl. And then I will retrieve the data set directly from my GitHub. So I will show you how does that look like. So on the github.com slash data professor, click on the repositories, click on the data. Okay, so over time, I intend to compile data sets. 
uh, particularly pro popular data set uh, all, from all over the internet and I'll also provide the original links to the original locations from which the data set was obtained. So for your convenience, it will be in this data folder. Okay, so please come back and have a look at this in the future for more data sets. So the iris.csv file will look like this. Okay, so in my code, I will retrieve this file, the, the raw form. So I can click on the link here, the URL, and then paste it here. So it's the same URL as you saw a moment ago. So I will use the function get URL and in parenthesis and in quotation mark, I'm going to type in the URL, which I can just right click and copy paste it right in here. Okay, and then it will read the CSV and then it will assign the resulting content of iris.csv file into the iris object. So let me run this command. So I hit on control enter and so it will run. Or alternatively, you can click on the line that you would like to run and then click on the button run. Okay, and then you see that the object iris has been shown. You can click on it or you could type in view parenthesis iris and then you will see the data frame of the data set right here. Okay, so let me show you how to use briefly the data frame. If you type in iris followed by a dollar sign, you will see the available variables that are in your data frame. And if you click on one of them and enter, you will see the contents of that file as a vector or as a list. Okay, on the, on the keyboard, you could hit on the up arrow and it will bring the previous command and then you could just modify it, iris and dollar sign, and then I can type in a new variable. Let's say I choose species and then the species value will be shown here. So I have 150 flowers, so 50 citosa, 50 versicolor, 50 virginica are shown right here. Okay, so this is the data frame. I can do neat stuff with this as well. I can assign this species into a species variable like this. Okay. Type in species and it will have the same values in here. Okay, I can do neat stuff like that as well. Okay, so now you have successfully import the iris data set into the environment and now we're ready to begin. So that, now let's go to the next stage, which is to display the summary statistics of your data. So your data set is within this object called iris. So you might want to just type in iris and see what happens. So you're going to see the data set, okay, which looks like if I type in view iris, and I see it as a spreadsheet-like view. And so there's four columns, simple length, simple width, pedal length, pedal width, and the species column. So these four variables are the independent variables which will allow the prediction model to learn the characteristics of the different types of flower in which there are three types of flower, citosa, virginica, versicolor. And on the basis of these four characteristics, the prediction model will be able to predict the type of flower. So in here, we're going to do some basic summary statistics. But before that, let's use the command head and tail to see the first four lines or the last four lines of the data set. I'll hit on control enter. And here you see, I'll see the first four rows and I'll see the last four rows using the head and the tail command. Okay, and this number, I can modify that to be five if I want to see five rows. See, there's one through five, or the tail, the last five rows. So the next stage is to look at the summary statistics of the iris data set. So let's type in summary, parenthesis, iris. For each of the variable, let's say starting from sepal length, I will see the minimum value, which is 4.3. I will see the maximum value, which is 7.9. I will see the first quartile, the third quartile value, and the mean and the median value here. 
Okay, for each of the four variables, I will see the same data as I have previously mentioned. And in the species, which is the class label, I will see that there are 50 flowers for each class of flower. And the summary command, I can also select specific variable as I have shown you by clicking the dollar sign command here. I will show only the sepal link. Okay, and so you're gonna see the summary stats of only the sepal link. Okay, a very handy command that will allow you to see whether your data set has any missing data is to use this. You do the summation function, and then within the summation function inside in the parenthesis, you're gonna type in the is.na command, which will try to find whether there is any values containing the na. Na means a missing value in your data set. And so this retrieves zero. It means that there is no missing values in the data set, okay? But in an actual data set, there might be some missing values. And if you have missing values in your data set, you will have to handle that in such a way that it will allow you to do sound analysis. So I will show you that in future videos. So there is a package called the skim R, which expands on the summary function by providing larger set of statistics. So if you don't have that yet, you can install it by typing install.packages parenthesis quotation skim r s k i m r and more details are provided on this link so i'm going to share this code on the github in the code folder and i'll put it in the comments down below so check out the description of this video for the link of this r code file and also the accompanying iris.csv file as well so let's load in the library skim r and let's see what it does so I type in the command skim iris, okay, and so I will see the summary statistics. The name of the data set is called iris. There's a total of 150 rows. There's a total of five columns. It detects that there is one factor, uh, which is the species, and there is four numeric values. Okay, and for the species, there's three sets each of the three class label there's 50 for each and for each of the variables sepal length sepal width petal length petal width there is no missing values here in this column and missing the number of missing value which is zero so there's nothing missing the mean value the standard deviation okay and the various quartiles of your data set and the the rough histogram of your data. So you get to see a rough distribution of your data. You see that there's two population for both petal and length and width. So you're gonna see there's two population here because the bars are separated. So let's say that we want to use the skim function by grouping it according to the species because there are three flower types. And so for each flower type, what's the mean value? What's the median value? So I can do that by using this command. So I'll highlight it and control enter. And so here you go. For the first variable, sepal length, I see that for Citosa, it has a mean value of 5. And for Versicolor, it has a mean value of 5.94. And for Versicolor, it has a mean value of 6.59. So I see that for the first variable, sepal length, Virginica seems to have a higher value. It has a higher mean, whereas Citosa and Versicolor has a lower mean than the Virginica. And for the sepal width, I can see that the Citosa has a higher mean than both the Versicolor and the Virginica, which has roughly similar mean values. And here at petal length, I can see that the Citosa has significantly lower mean than both the Versicolor and Virginica. For the Citosa, it also has significantly lower mean for the petal width. From this, I can get a rough idea of how the data set are distributed. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.